I'm very happy to be here at the IBAN conference and uh, I hope I can uh, give some ideas for business angels where they should invest. And uh, which, where would the trends be? What are the trends? Well, yeah. It, what I, I hope I can provide them with is some uh, trends where, which uh, come from uh, research, actually, and in which uh, there are new possible new developments and uh, in which uh, business angels should uh, be able to find some things they get excited about. So. And what are those trends? I mean, what are the most important trends for the next, you know, 20 years? For the next 20 years, I think uh, a lot of uh, innovation will come uh, also from, uh, from uh, projects which are actually uh, were initially research projects. But uh, some of them uh, stay in research and some others branch out to more uh, activities, more connected to industry or services. And that's typically uh, where you need to, to think differently and to have really a business model in mind and really to, to really uh, get uh, really to, to the market, think in terms of market. And this is something uh, most of the time scientists are not uh, really prepared for and therefore they need uh, to be accompanied by the right people. They need to be also accompanied uh, by the right uh, investments. That is people bringing uh, not only money, not only the business model, but also money at some stage to really get uh, the project to a different size and really reach out to many more people. And the areas uh, covered by ERC, uh, European Research Council, are really completely uh, open. I mean, there are really many different things. We are really covering the research agenda very in all directions, from physics to biology to sociology, to in including humanities. And, and therefore, the, as you know, I mean, in the modern world, uh, there are no boundaries. So in the sense, uh, many uh, of the most interesting projects are actually uh, across borders. That is, they are not, uh, you cannot uh, describe them as being just there. They are really in many different places. But all this uh, multidisciplinarity uh, is uh, very important for us, although it's uh, very challenging, not so easy to recognize and to, to identify properly. But I think uh, many of the most exciting projects are really of this nature in terms of uh, further development, namely to, to because they will be uh, addressing uh, communities which are quite often uh, very open communities. I'll just give an example which I liked very much, although it's not a uh, lot of money with it, but I think uh, it's a very typical example of activities that you never thought about. I'm thinking about the project of an architect and she was uh, always puzzled by the fact that architects were bothered by the regulations for handicapped people. And uh, actually she, she said that that's not the way it should be approached. Uh, you should th think of these uh, spe specificities you need to deal with the problems of handicapped people as a challenge, as a positive challenge. So if you turn things around, instead of viewing this as constraints which come by law, but just the opposite as really a, a challenge intellectually for your job as architect, then uh, it's uh, completely different. So what kind of service came out of this? Of course, it was initially a, a work of architect, but then uh, she thought that uh, what would be extremely useful would be to have an interface between the handicapped peoples and architects. That is, she set up an agency in which the uh, handicapped people are offering their services and the architects are looking for advice and comments from, from, the, from the handicapped people. So it's a typical example where there was uh, initially uh, the idea of a professional, but then you turn it into a social service. And uh, of course, and if you develop that at a certain scale, then you need some, some investment, you need to organize the right interface between these. Uh, so this is a typical example where there's not so much money involved, but uh, there is definitely out of it uh, social service which can be provided. Excellent. Now, a lot of people think that angel investors don't invest a lot of money, but actually my first project, my first, I created the SES Astro Satellite, and our first investor was an angel investor who gave us a million dollars. So are there any big projects that, you know, 
that we can also invest in. Of course, no. I was giving this yeah, example. I know, I know, but, so, but if you can just uh, say you know, another type of... There are definitely other types of projects in which people can, can invest and which are require really uh, developing uh, platforms, uh, sophisticated uh, equipment, and, uh, and also reach out to uh, identify the right market and uh, the right people to, to, to whom uh, all the project can really be useful and, and the product that people can buy and, uh, and then uh, use. Uh, so there are different, uh, many d different things. I mean, some of them um, are connected to ELS, for example, I have in mind one I'm going to quote, which uh, has to do with uh, new types of diagnosis uh, for cancer, which uh, again, uh, the, the whole idea would be to make it uh, very, very simple and also very widespread. Uh, with the idea that uh, then uh, you have to make it accepted by the uh, medical profession and so on. But um, I think, uh, again, there the, the key thing will be the business model because uh, a priori the, the cost of, the, of the, uh, the test is not so, so high, but the whole thing will be to make it available very broadly, very simply and so on. So there you, you need really to develop a business model to transform this, which is from the scientific point of view, a certain breakthrough into something which now becomes widely available. That's a typical example. You may have other things which are very fantastic um, um, things happening has to do with uh, new materials. For example, I'm sure you have heard about graphene, which is uh, this uh, new, very special kind of uh, organization of, uh, I mean, uh, carbon uh, atoms and uh, which give rise to very interesting two-dimensional layers uh, which, uh, with which you can do fantastic things. This happens at the nano scale. So, of course, the, the equipment you need to develop this is, of course, very specific and uh, very sophisticated physics. But the, uh, it looks like the uh, possible development in terms of, uh, of the use in many different areas of these new materials, because that's one of the strongest material one can produce. It's uh, much stronger than steel. And, and so therefore there are many, uh, you have to I imagine new ways of uh, uh, developing these materials and using them in the various contexts. And of course there you need, uh, you are talking about uh, really factories, you are talking about, uh, so it's a different scale. So you, you have to count in millions, it's not uh, just a service that you are providing. And uh, again there, th there will be the question of identifying what kind of areas will be mo the most relevant for all these new materials. So there are all these different branches, different uh, challenges to, to society, which uh, I think uh, with uh, research-based innovation you can actually uh, really, um, I'm sure, attract the attention and the investment of uh, business angels.